the Dopera brothers uh, invented it, and uh, this is an evolution of it. This is a Shearhorn Dobro made by National Company, but it's basically an acoustic instrument, and uh, it predates, goes back to 19, 1920s. And uh, about 19, 1930s, they invented the electric steel guitar, and then these got out of favor. And fortunately for, uh, for the Dobro, Guys like Brother Oswald and Josh Graves came around and they brought it back out of the woodworks and, and, and started playing it again and, and it became alive again. And it's got a real resurgence now. It's a lot of Dobro players now, a lot of young Dobro players and they're really good. I'm not one of them. I'm one of the old ones. <laughs> the old school. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to play some tunes for you. I'll play some fiddle tunes. I'll play some tunes by some of the... Older artists, some of the newer artists, I might tell you a couple of things, and uh, I'll just play. And if you have any requests, you can request them, but I'm not saying I'll know them. So where are you yeah. from? I'm from San Diego, California. Really? Right now, yeah. Okay. Okay, so here we go. Okay. With a fiddle tune. Okay. called Bill Cheatham, fiddle tune, for those of you who didn't recognize it. And uh, Now I'd like to do a little bit of Blackberry Blossom, and this is a Dobro-fied version of Blackberry Blossom. A lot of these fiddle tunes, you can't get all the notes on the Dobro, so you kind of adapt them. So this is Blackberry Blossom, Dobro-fied.
And now I'd like to change the pace a little bit and go to some modern music. I'm going to play a medley of Beatles tunes for you. I'll start with Yesterday, and we'll do Here Comes the Sun, and then If I Fell. Okay, hope you like this.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, and now I want to tell you a little story. A uh, story about uh, my good friend Mike Aldridge. Oh, yeah. One time I was over to his house and uh, visiting with him, and we went down his basement where he usually had his steel set up and his dobros set up. And uh, we were sitting there just talking and just not playing anything. He says, why don't we play something? He says, uh, what do you want to play? And I said, gee, I don't know. I said, the only thing I can think of is one of your tunes. <laughs> so all I could think of was uh, Mike's tune called Jamboree that he did on one of his early albums. And he said, well, play that. I said, well, I'm kind of embarrassed to play it in front of you, but he said, uh, no, go ahead, play it. So uh, I played it, and uh, I'll play it for you now. It's called Jamboree. <laughs> done playing it and he says what what the, were you doing there I said I was playing playing the way you played it I thought he said no on the low strings he says what were you playing there I said well I was going <laughs> I said, what do you mean that's great? I thought that was how you played it. He said, no, I like that better than what I did. So that gave me a real thrill that day. He didn't do a full roll. I did a full roll. I kept a note going every 16th note, whereas he went... Slight variation, but the way I heard it on the recording was with every note, every sixteenth note, and uh, so we got a good kick out of that. He and I, <laughs> he was a great guy. Yeah, he bought a guitar from Mike. Oh, he did, Holly. Oh, yeah, great guy. Got to be good friends with. Him. That's great. Excuse me, my water is over there behind that case. Could somebody hand me that, please? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, terrific fella. Really. Oh, yeah. And of course, fantastic yeah. musician, player, well, he was one of the taste. Oh, overall. fantastic. A lot faster players, but none that made it sound any better than mine. He had the touch. Yeah. Yeah, he had the sound and the feel. And he has such a big sound out of his dobro. And one time at a festival, I asked if I could try his dobro. You know, I sat down. And it sounded so thin, I couldn't believe it was a thin sounding instrument, but he got just so much body by the way his fingers just hit the strings and the positions he played it in. So let's do another Mike Aldridge tune here. Let's do one of his called Green Sleeves, okay? <laughs>
Easy. Thank you. Okay. And here's one that he played on his first album, and he was capturing the sounds of the old Hawaiian dobro sounds, and he wanted to put a little bit of that sound on that first really great album called Dobro Island. Just Dobro. Dobro Island. You got it. Yahweh, all those. Good, good. So I'm going to play a little bit of Dobro Island for you. Is one of one of Mike's relatively newer tunes that I had never learned in about, about uh, a month ago. I sat down and I worked it out. One called Carolina Palms. Oh, yeah. We we'll play that one probably yeah. too, right? We'll play that one. Yeah. tunes by my idol, the fella had got me into the dobro, a fella named Josh Graves, oh, yeah. Uncle Josh. Played the Flat and Scruggs, joined them in 1955, and he was a great player when he joined them, but he also sat down with Earl Scruggs and he worked out the banjo roll that Earl was doing and he adapted it to the dobro and he started playing some great dobro then with, with the banjo rolls in it too. And he just expanded the whole realm of the dobro and I'd like to play a couple of his tunes for you now. Here's Fireball Mail. I'm sure you know this one too.
one of his famous tunes. Here's one called Flat Lonesome. Oh, yeah. tune for you. Would you like to hear one that I wrote? Yeah. Okay, here's one uh, that I wrote for my granddaughter, Hope. And I call it With Hope in My Heart. I hope you like this one. original tune. This one's called Step To It on my one CD. This was my big hit record, played all over the world. Got great ratings. Hardly sold any. <laughs> but that's right. It was an artistic success. Step To It.
you very much. Thank you. Steve Toth, everybody. Um, Steve, um, tell, tell just everybody real quick just something about your book because he's got this great book and I bought okay, myself I've, a copy. I've got a, uh, a new book out. It came out about three, four years ago called Dobro Roots. It's a history book on pre-war Dobros and it, it's got just about every model of pre-war Dobro in it photographed with modern photography from my collection of instruments and my buddy's collection of instruments and we've got almost every instrument, every model from that 1930s period, from 1929 to 1941. And I, if those who don't know it, from 1941 till about the late 1950s, 1960, they didn't make one dope row. They stopped during the war because they couldn't use the metal for Dobros, they had to use it for the war effort, and they never began making them again until the 60s. So that first era is kind of like a time capsule of instruments, and they're great, wonderful instruments, and uh, you're starting to get new interest in them among the Dobro community. So, it's a really and if I um, if I were to Google Steve Toth and Dobro book, I could probably find a way to find Steve it. Steve Toth, order Dobro, it. Dobro, Steve Toth, Dobro, and you'll see a whole bunch of things come up. My instruction books are on there, and uh, or Dobro Roots. If you Google that, it'll come up. Amazon carries it; they carry it all over the world. And uh, you can, if you want to get a copy, you can certainly go there and get it. It's, it's a great, great book. Thank you. It really is a great book. Oh, the photography you. is beautiful, and uh, so much information. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah. Cool. Thank Unsolicited. You. <laughs> I'll pay you later. Okay. Well, thanks, Steve. And we're now adjourned, as I understand it, until 4.30. Mm -hmm. They're doing the installation of officers down there. Stephen is nodding, so I got that right. And yep. we'll be back at 4.30 with Carco Clave. Hey.